Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 12. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we're going to still be using our data set. These are sales transactions from our Boomerang Sales website. And in this video, we want to look at age and payment method. And so what it means is we have one two variables. And the perfect tool to look at frequency distribution with two variables, the pivot table. Now, so far, frequency distributions have been just one variable. But the pivot table can do one, two, three, four variables as easy as dragging and dropping the field names. Now, I want to go look at the end result. We're going to go to cross tab answer. And here's the pivot table, and here's the three charts. But let's just see how a pivot table with one, two variable works. Any intersecting cell is a calculation with two conditions or criteria. Now, we're building frequency distribution, so we're counting. But what does that 6 mean? That means we went over to the data set and counted all of the 34 to 40-year-olds who used MasterCard. Over here. How many people 55 to 61 who used PayPal? So any intersecting cell is a calculation with two criteria. Our calculation is counting. Now, let's look at these different charts. One, two, three. They're all looking at the same data, but each one is articulating a slightly different message. Now look here, we have up in the legend the payment methods, and down in the horizontal axis are our age categories. This chart here is called a clustered column. In the textbook, they call it side-by-side -side bar. I'm going to use the names that Excel uses, because then it's easier to pick them. Now, what this chart emphasizes is the actual items from the legend. We're comparing them for each age category. We can clearly see the purple one is biggest for the age 27 to 33. That means PayPal. So the emphasis here is comparing the legends in each age category. Let's go over to this chart. This chart is not covered in the book. It's called a stacked column. And I very much like this chart. This chart emphasizes the height for each one of the ages. And yet we still get to see inside this column the actual individual pieces. The actual size here means the count. Now, whereas this chart emphasizes the total column height for each age, this one is emphasizing the total column height for each individual payment method. Now, the third chart, and this one is called in Excel 100% stack column. In the textbook, they call it stack bar. Now, the key to this is that every column is the same height. These are percentages. It's as if we have pie charts, 1, 2, 3, 4, but they're orientated like a column. They are all the same height because they all equal 100%. So you've got to be careful with this one sometimes. But the nice thing about 100% stack column is this is a quantitative variable here, age. So you can sort of see the shape or pattern as we go across the age categories. But don't get confused. This is percentage. This is the actual heights, 1, 2, 3 all from a cross-tabulated pivot table. Let's go and create these. I'm going to click on Cross Tab. Click in a single cell, Insert, Pivot Table, or Alt-NV. I want to put it on a new worksheet, so I'm going to click OK or hit Enter. Now we want to start with age. I'm going to grab age and drag it down to rows. And oh, how amazing pivot tables are. Right click the row label, group. And we're going to use our same start age and increment from our earlier videos. Hey, we're going to use the min age of 16, tab, tab. We don't need to change that. It'll be automatic. When we use our by field, this is the class width or increment, we're going to use 7, just like we did in earlier videos. Click OK. Instantly, that's grouped up. Remember, this is an integer. Even though it's a continuous 
quantitative variable, the integer gives us very polite labels for our categories. There's no ambiguity here. 16 to 22, and because there's nothing between 22 and 23, we immediately jump to 23 to 29. Now I can come over and we're going to get our payment method, drag it to columns. Boom, instantly one, two variables. Notice this is a quantitative variable, but we've rolled it up in groups so the pivot table will interpret it as a category and count. Quantitative variable, categorical variable. For cross tabs, you can do it anyway. You can have two categorical, two quantitative, or in our case, one of each. Now we're going to drag any particular column down to values because it will just count any time it gets a match for the two criteria. So I'm going to drag age down. Now I'm going to close the field list. I'm going to change the layout, so design, report layout, because I want to show the actual field name. So I'm going to show an outline, customer age and payment method. Click in cell A3 cross tab of count. Now you can do your analysis from here. We can clearly see MasterCard, age 23 to 29, there were 10. PayPal for this age category, 13. Visa, there were 14. Now, but how about a visualization to help us more quickly see our information? I'm going to click in a single cell, insert, click the column. This one is clustered column, or in the textbook, side-by-side -side bar. This is the stack column. It's not in the textbook. This is what they call a stacked bar. We're going to call it a 100% stack column. I'm going to select the first one. Boop. That's looking pretty good right from the start. But we do want to change a few things. Right click, hide all field buttons. Click on the legend, right click, format legend, or control 1. And we're going to put it at the top. Let's close our task pane. Let's use the plus, and we're going to select axis titles. This one is selected. Type an equal sign. Jumps up to the formula bar. Click on cell A3 and Enter. Click on the horizontal axis label. Equal sign. I'm going to click on customer age and Enter. Now, one important thing is we don't want the columns to be touching here in this cross tab. But now we can clearly start comparing in the age group 37 to 43, PayPal is the most. Over in 44 to 50, this age group didn't even use Discover. 51 to 57, clearly Visa was the highest. But look at this. Here's something. You'd think that the, the younger categories would use PayPal. But for some reason, this upper age, 58 to 64, using a lot of PayPal. Maybe one of the senior centers that uh, featured this uh, website for buying boomerangs taught everyone how to use PayPal or something. All right, so this chart is quite nice for comparing our different payment methods across our age categories. Now I'm going to copy this. Click on the edge, Control-C. I'm going to pull it off to the side. Click right here, Control-V. And it's just as simple as changing the chart type. Right click. Change chart type, and I want this second one, stacked column. Stack column, when I click OK, this emphasizes the actual total for each age group. So which age group bought the most boomerangs or had the most transactions from our website? 23 to 29. Which one had the least? It looks like 65 to 71. Ha, but look at this. We can still see the individual comparisons based on our legend. Now, one last chart. I'm not even going to copy it because it's already queued up. I'm going to pull this to the side. Click here, Control V to paste it. Right click, change chart type. We want to select the 100% stack column. Click OK. This chart allows us to look at our quantitative variable along the horizontal axis. And up in the legend, we have our categorical variable. And we can clearly see some kind of patterns. Well, actually, there's not much of a pattern. It's up and down, up and down. Some other data sets, you might clearly see some pattern over uh, whatever quantitative variable we have on the horizontal axis. Wow, that's pretty amazing. I'm going to Control and roll my mouse to roll out to zoom out and arrange these. 
And I want to do one last cross tab just to show you how amazingly easy this is. Cross tab. How about we look at region and product? These are two categorical variables. Let's click in a single cell, Alt N V, and I'm going to hit Enter. I'm going to drag, oops, I have two bad sheet names. I'm going to come over here. And I can't call this cross tab, because there's already this, or cross tab answer. Since this is the answer, I'm going to put AN2. You can never have the same sheet name. This one I'm going to call cross tab answer 3. And all we're going to do is drag region down to columns product down to rows, and then whichever one down to values. Close the field list, design, report layout, show an outline. Click in cell A3, cross tab frequency. It's as easy as that. We can clearly see for the particular product Carlota, we sold six in the east, 14 in the Midwest, 3 in the South, and 21 in the West. Now, one other important aspect about a cross tab, check this out. There's a grand total here and here. If we were to drag the region field away, which we'll do in a second, guess what? Product names, frequency. Not only that, but you can also see the regions here. And here's the frequencies for those in the grand total. Now check this out. That means we have three and one frequency distributions. Inside is our cross tab, frequency distribution for product, frequency distribution for region. Now I actually close the field list. So right click, show field list. Just for a second, I'm going to drag. This is the region, so I'm just going to uncheck it. There's our frequency table. Drag it down to columns, cross tab, and the frequency is still there. Now we want to go over and look at what's called Simpson's Paradox. Now here's a data set, and I actually have the filters turned on. I just equip, oh, you can't see that. I'm going to right click Insert a Column just for a second. The filters are quite polite because they'll always give you a unique list. So there's only two sales reps in this particular data set, Joe and Mo. And we have a column that says whether their communication with the customer did not end up in a sale or ended up in a sale, yes or no. And we have sales channel. They either communicated by email or phone. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to build a pivot table that counts the number of yeses for each sales rep. Yes means they actually had a sale from their communication. But here's the thing. When we use one, two variables in our cross-tabulated table, later when we add a third variable, we'll see that the actual results we got from the first table are mysteriously reversed. Now, it's not that mysterious. It's just if we don't include this variable here, then it is a hidden variable. And so we have to be careful when we do cross tabs. All right, let's check this out. I'm going to click in a single cell. Actually, I'm going to right click Delete. Click in a single cell, Alt N V, and I want to put it on this sheet. Location, I'm going to try and put it in E1. Click OK. Our field list, I'm going to drag Sales Rep down to Columns contact result in a sale down to rows. And then it doesn't matter which variable we drag, because remember, the counting is based on the transactions that have these two criteria or conditions. I'm going to drag contact result in sale down to values. Now, let's fix this up a little bit. Design, report layout, show an outline. Cell E1 is selected. I'm going to type cross tab. Enter. And this one's a little bit too long. I'm going to type Y slash N for yes or no. Now I'm going to highlight the columns E and drag all the way to H. And then I want to make them all the same size as the largest text here. So I'm going to point between H and I and click and drag just a little bit. So they're all the same size. Now let's copy this table. Control C, Control V and J1. And I'm going to point to the Smart tag and say, give me the same column widths. Now let's change the calculation. Right click, 
show values as. This is amazing, percent of column total. And instantly we see Joe had 14% of the yeses and Mo had 13%. Now check this out. This is true based on just the yeses and no. There were actually more yeses in comparison to the total for Joe than there were for Mo. But remember, there was a sales channel. What if we unaggregate this? Because there's a hidden variable there. And add that hidden variable. We'll do one, two tables. One for Joe, one for Mo with that third variable. And we'll see that it's reversed. Because Joe actually did overall better just looking at the yeses and nos, but not for the phone and email together. Well, let's check this out. I'm going to highlight this table here, Control-C. And I want to make sure and go one, two, three cells below, Control-V. Now I want to look at our pivot table field list. Right now it's in the columns, sales rep in the rows, yes, no. Now in our earlier video, we used a slicer as a filter for the whole pivot table. But you don't have to use the slicer. I'm going to drag sales rep up to filter. Boom. Now it's everybody, right? You can see it says all there. And then I'm going to drag sales channel down to column. Now, this is a little scary here. I'm going to move this out of the way. That's too close up there. I should have gone four cells down. So I'm going to Control X, click right in J7, Control V. Then I'm going to copy. And because it already has the filter, I can go just one below, Control V. And now let's check this out inside the pivot table. I'm going to check and select Joe only. Click OK. And I'm going to come down to the third pivot table with our percentages of column total and select just Mo, click OK. Email, phone, email, phone. And look at this. Here's all the yeses. Here's all the yeses. This is Joe. This is Mo. Now let's look at Joe, all the yeses. Oh, OK, so for email, 8.82%. But look at Mo. Compared to his total, he had 12%. So for the sales channel email, Mo actually did better as a percentage than Joe did. Look at this one, 15, that's Joe's. 16, that's Mo's. That means for phone, comparing the yeses to the total number of phone calls, Mo did as a percentage better. That's an example of Simpson's paradox. And all it means is nothing's lying here. There was just a hidden variable. And when we unaggregated, broop, one, two, we had a different picture. Hey, that's a lot about cross tabs. It's they're totally amazing and easy. Go over to the cross tab three. We saw with this cross tab two categorical variables, and it was like three and one. Cross tab, frequency distribution for product, frequency distribution for region. And over here, we did a cross tab with a quantitative and categorical variable. And we saw our 100% stacked column, clustered column, and our stacked column charts as options for visualizing our data. All right, next video, we will talk about two variables for XY data and see how to do a scatter chart. All right, see you next video.